What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack of Packs series. Today we are opening up a pack of the 2014 core set. Because this is a core set, we are expecting to see some cards that are a little bit lower power level than we are used to seeing, especially in the last pack, which was Modern Masters. This is going to be a pretty big jump. Uh, but as always, we are going to do our best to figure out what our pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set. Uh, I do apologize if I have a bit of a cough. I did in the, the Modern Masters episode and I'm bulk recording right now and uh, I am getting over a little bit of a sickness. So I do apologize, but we'll do the best we can. Our first card here is Time Ebb. It is two and a blue for a sorcery, put target creature on top of its owner's library. This is a perfectly great tempo spell. At three mana, it's reasonably costed in my opinion. Sorcery speed is obviously a bit of a downside, but it's really not the biggest downside in the world. You essentially put something on top of their deck, you know that they're going to be drawing that. They're probably just going to be replaying that. If they don't have a land especially, they're going to be replaying that. Uh, and so I really like a card like this. Downside obviously being that it does only hit creatures. It'd be really nice if it hits something else, uh, even just permanent in general or non-land permanent something. But it's fine. I think it's a perfectly fine tempo spell. Not really first pickable in my opinion, but it is pretty good. Excuse me. Uh, Soul Mender is a 1-1 for 1 white. You can tap it and you gain a life. Pretty straightforward card. Not one that I really like. Uh, life gain in general, unless you're really dedicated to the strategy, tends not to be very good and limited. Uh, it's fine and constructed where you can really, really build around, get a lot of synergy going and things like that. But in a card like this, where you're literally just gaining one life every turn and it really doesn't last very long because it's just a one drop, it's probably either going to have to chump block or just die to a burn spell or a kill spell of some kind. It really doesn't do enough. Uh, you're not, you're all, all you're really doing is stalling the game. That's it. And so I'm not a fan of a card like this at all. Uh, Verdant Haven is an enchantment land, uh, so two and a green, uh, whenever it enters the battlefield you gain two life, and whenever the land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of any color to his or her mana pool. This is great if you're in a multi-color strategy, or if you're just in a general ramp strategy, it's perfectly fine there as well, uh, but I'd rather be established in those, those archetypes a little bit further along first, uh, because honestly, if you just have this as like a three drop in a regular kind of easy curve deck, it's gonna be doing next to nothing in your deck most of the time. Yeah, it gains you a couple life and saves you against maybe a couple of aggro uh, decks, but that's it. Uh, not a huge fan of this unless you're in those strategies, so definitely not a first pick in my mind. Uh, Claustrophobia is an enchant creature for one and two blue. When it enters the battlefield, you tap the enchanted creature, and it does not untap during its controller's untap step. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is actually a very, very good removal spell for blue. Really like it a lot. This is so far definitely the pick. Uh, removal in blue is fairly difficult to come by anyway. Uh, you do have things like time ebb, which are tempo plays, but they're not hard removal. And while this isn't necessarily hard removal either, it really does take the card out of play as best as blue can. And so for that reason, definitely love it. Uh, Giant Spider is a 2-4 for 3 and a green. It does have reach, so it can block creatures with flying. This is, again, a very serviceable 4-drop for green. Perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, but I'd rather be in green first. This isn't a reason to be in green. Claustrophobia is much more of a reason to go blue, in my opinion. Uh, and so for that reason, I would not pick the Giant Spider over it. Armored Cantrix, or Canstrix, I, I apologize for the names here, uh, but it is just a 2-5 vanilla creature for 4 and a blue. This card is absolute garbage. There's absolutely no reason you should ever play this unless you are just using it as filler. Uh, it is so bad that it, it just doesn't do enough. At 5, you're getting a 2-5. It's not even going to be dealing with the 2 drops, maybe even the 3 drops of the early game. And so it may stick around for a while, but that's really all it's going to do. I don't like a card like this at all, uh, for sure. I hope I didn't pick two cards up. No, I didn't. Uh, Rumbling Bailoth is a 4-4 vanilla creature for two and two green. <coughs> this is just a perfectly on curve four drop. Not anything too spectacular about this, but if I'm in green and I'm looking a little bit light on my four drop, uh, this is probably the perfect card for that. Uh, it's going to be able to deal a good bit of damage, so it's going to be difficult to deal with on the opponent's side of things unless they just have a straight up kill spell. Uh, and so I like it. It's not great, but it's perfectly fine. 
Uh, Dawnstrike Paladin is a 2-4 for 3 and 2 white. It does have Vigilance and it also has a lifelink. Uh, if you don't know what Vigilance is, it does not tap when it attacks. And lifelink just means any damage dealt by this also means you gain that much life. Uh, that does uh, come into play even if you're blocking a creature. If you're new to the game and you don't happen to know, uh, lifelink does trigger even if you're dealing damage just to a creature. It doesn't matter if it's a creature, player, planeswalker. You're going to be gaining that life regardless. Uh, I am okay with this card, but I don't really love it. Uh, I like the keyword abilities on it a lot, but because of the keyword abilities, it's very high costed for only a 2-4. Uh, it's going to be outpowered pretty quickly on board, in my opinion, and so I think it's fine, but it seems like a bit of a trap for me. Uh, I don't think I would first pick this by any means, uh, but I mean, I would try it. I don't think it's great, uh, but definitely would pick Claustrophobia over it. <coughs> Uh, Act of Treason, very classic card. Sorcery for two and a red. Gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Untap that creature, and it gains haste until the end of the turn. This is a very, very good card for an aggressive red deck. Uh, being able to, on turn three, steal one of their creatures and start swinging in with everything just means you're going to get so far ahead in the damage race that ideally you'll be able to just burn them out uh, with shocks or something along those lines. I really like this card. I don't think it's necessarily good to first pick. I think you want to be in that red deck first. Uh, Claustrophobia, again, more of a reason to be in blue. It's good on its own. Act of Treason is good, but really only in that style deck or maybe a sacrifice outlet deck where you can steal the creature, attack with it, and then sacrifice it. Uh, and so it's a little bit more focused in that regard. I don't think this is good in every deck. Uh, so perfectly fine in that strategy, but if you're not in it, do not first pick it. <coughs> Uh, Giant Growth, uh, again, very classic card. Instant for one green. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. This is a very, very good combat trick. Uh, if you are in green, you will probably want maybe one or two of these in your deck just to be able to deal with uh, blocks, things like that, deal with combat effectively. It's very, very efficient. At one green for plus three, plus three, that is huge. So very much enjoy this card. Definitely would want it. Again, if I'm not established in green, though, this is not the kind of card that I want to first pick. Our first uncommon is Bubbling Cauldron. It is an artifact for two of any color. You can pay one and tap it, sacrifice a creature, and you gain four life. Or you can pay one, tap it, sacrifice a creature named Festering Newt, and each opponent loses four life, and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. I hate this card, uh, to be honest. I don't like the little Festering Newt combo. Festering Newt on its own is an okay uh, early drop, but this card is very dependent on Festering Newt. It's not good to just sacrifice a creature and gain four life, in my opinion. Uh, it's okay to drain four life, but you are losing a creature in the process, and it does have some, I guess, synergy there, but in general, not a fan of this card. <coughs> uh, Kalanian Tusker, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 3-3 three, three for 2 green vanilla creature, but it is a 3-3 three, three for 2, and in this set, that's pretty rare to come by. This is a very, very good aggressive creature. Uh, in a green deck, this is perfect. You want as many of these as you can get for the early turns of the game because a lot of times you can just start outpowering the opponent very, very quickly in green, uh, and this helps you do that very, very well. I don't necessarily know if it's better than Claustrophobia. I would tend to lean towards Claustrophobia just because I like that style of deck, the tempo removal style decks a little bit more. Uh, but this is a very, very good card if you're in for the creature based, just aggressive strategy. <coughs> uh, Diabolic Tutor is our last uncommon for two and two black. It's a sorcery. Search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. You then shuffle your library. Normally, tutors are like hit or miss, I've found in limited, uh, unless you're like cube drafting or something where it's very, very specific deck archetypes. Uh, in limited, it's like, yeah, you can get cards, but if you don't have like a great win now kind of target, it's not that great. You still have to pay four mana for this, then be able to pay for the mana of the other thing that you're getting. It's nice that it's any card for sure, but that's a very expensive tutor, uh, and it only goes... Uh, well, it does go into your hand, but it's just so, so much mana investment. I don't like this card for limited personally. Uh, I would argue that there are probably some people that like would swear by this card because it's a tutor and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I just do not see it as, as good. So that's where I land on that. And then our rare is a Johnny's chosen. So it's two and two white for a three, three 
Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you put a 2-2 white cat creature token onto the battlefield. If that enchantment is an aura, you may attach it to the token. It is a very interesting card. Uh, obviously very, very powerful. Uh, token generators and limited, fantastic. You get a lot of value out of them for sure, but enchantments tend to be a little bit trickier to come by in limited. Uh, certainly claustrophobia is one and we've probably we've seen uh, verdant haven or whatever it was in there as well if I'm not mistaken but uh, it's very very rare to get an enchantment focus deck in limited but this is definitely the reason to be in it it's a build around card for enchantment decks so if you're into just trying it out I would say go with this for sure safe pick is claustrophobia in my opinion but a Johnny's chosen is probably what I would go with and then just start picking up enchantments as best I can uh, it's just so much value if you can make it work. So I think it's worth the risk. Uh, if you disagree, please let me know in the comment section below. But if you liked this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.